Yo, what's up everybody, Jumpin' Ya, yeah. and today I wanted to go ahead and make a video showing both of my super in-game builds in one video. Now, I've made other videos about these builds. I have changed some things up, mainly the armor, and I do want to talk about that and give the update. So there are some things that are different if you've seen the other videos before. But I wanted to go ahead and show like both the builds in one video because I also made another video which is about like how you can use a couple builds and they can destroy the underworld. One build there was a corruption build. The other one was a purity build. So I want to do the same thing here. This is like basically the super in-game version of those builds because what you end up doing is once you get the depths of the underworld, which is like the last thing that you can basically do, it is the hardest content in the game. But once you get to that point, you can actually get a certain grace. It's called Oyamasui. It is the best defensive, tanky grace in the whole game. And, I mean, it really makes a crazy difference, especially for when you are doing things like the Depths of the Underworld. Because the gameplay here, both gameplay you're watching, is going to be floor 30, which is the final floor we have, basically, in the Depths of the Underworld. So, this is definitely the hardest content. And you're going to see me get hit by things that would normally just one shot and just kill people like so fast. And I'm just going to take it like a champ because these builds are super tanky. And they're also very good offensively. The first build is a corruption build. It's using Susano and Oyamatsui. Now Susano is a lot of fun, especially if you know how to play it right. And I say definitely use two weapons. I think it's a lot easier to play if you use two weapons, and I think that's a mistake a lot of people make. They try to use one weapon, and then they just have trouble really using versatility with Susanoo, where I think if you're using two weapons, it's a lot easier. By the way, the weapons for both these builds, they don't matter. You can use really whatever weapon you want. I would say you want to like find a combination of weapons that work well together, like when it comes to the scaling stats. I always think that's a good idea, but if you want to use some different weapons, you don't have to use the split staff and the switch glaive because that's what I'm using. Now this other build, the purity build, this is an Izanagi build. And the thing about Izanagi is that Izanagi is like way easier than using like versatility because all you got to do is just give yourself some buffs and then basically you just do some crazy damage. Now Susano and Izanagi will give you a 60% damage buff. So that's really nice. Now I know some people always say, "Well, what if you combine those together and then you can get 120%?" And guess what? That is one of the best offensive builds in the whole game. But the problem is, is that if you try to take that build into something like the Depths of the Underworld, and especially on the higher floors, you could do some crazy damage. But if you, like, get hit, you're probably going to get, like, one-shotted, to be honest with you. So that is definitely, like, a problem with a build like that. But it is one of the best offensive builds. But basically, that's why I have chose to use Susano on one build, and I chose to use is a Nagi on the other one is because basically it is the best like offensive thing you can do if you want to combine it with a defensive grace like Oyamatsui then you need a good offensive grace so that's why I decided to do what I did now I will also give some tips about farming which I haven't done before either like if you want to know like what do you want to do in terms of like getting like your super in-game build like together I will actually do a segment for both builds and I know the video might be long, so there will be timestamps. I will always put a pinned comment there. It will be in the description. And what's really nice about YouTube now, they went ahead and added it so that when you're actually watching the video, you can actually see like the different chapters, which are basically timestamps. So if you want to like skip around, go ahead, that's fine. But also I will say is that you don't have to necessarily watch like the whole video if you only want to do one of the builds. If you want to do the corruption build, just watch the corruption build. If you want to use the purity build, just watch the purity build segments. Alrighty guys, well now I'm going to break down these builds. I'm going to go into great details and I'm going to start with the corruption build. Now I know I said I was going to start with the corruption build, which I will. But before I actually like break that down, let me go ahead and just talk about some of the universal things. Because I'm using the same weapon on both builds. I'm using the switch glaive and the split staff. And because of that there are going to be things that are literally the same, like the stats, for example, and also the clan, that's the same, and the skills, obviously, are going to be the same because I'm using the same weapons. So let me talk about that first. That way, when we actually do the corruption build and the purity build and I break those down, 
I don't have to like repeat myself and talk about the same stuff because literally it's identical. So the highlights of the stats, we have 7,200 attack, we have 12,000 defense, and we basically have 10,000 life. So that is awesome and it's crazy. Now, one of the things I love about the split staff and switch glaive, this combination, is what you can do with your stats. I love ultimate constitution and I love ultimate magic. On every build I do, no matter what the weapon is, I try to get those if possible. And then I can go ahead and put points into other things for the damage scaling. So an example is whenever you're trying to get the most damage possible, you want to get 200 in that stat associated with your damage scaling. So in the case of the split staff, it's courage and magic. And in the case of the switch glaive, it's constitution and magic. So I'm really happy about that. I love ultimate courage as well. I can live without it, but I do like it a lot. So being able to have ultimate constitution, courage, and magic is amazing. And it gives me a lot of extra points to play with so I can get higher dexterity, higher heart, more stamina and strength so I can go ahead and remodel my armor to give me more defense. So there's a lot going with this weapon combination. I really like it a lot. And I personally think it's one of the best weapon combinations you can do. Now, if you do want to use different weapons, that's fine. You just have to figure out how you want to do your stats. Remember, you want to try to get 200 for whatever your damage scaling is. But I would say getting 150 constitution and 150 magic is super nice for both of those ultimates. They really help a lot. But let me go ahead and now break down the rest of the stats. Heart, I think 50 heart is enough. When you're talking about like your stamina, your key, I think 50 is more than enough in my personal opinion. I see people that will have a much higher heart and it's just because they want more key, I guess, but I just don't see the point of that. I have 50 strength and I have 54 stamina. That is mainly for remodeling my armor. That way I can get higher defense. I will talk about that later, but that's the reason why both of them are the way they are. And one thing I will have to also point out, of course, you want to be in the green weight if possible and have B agility. That's super, super important. And then the final thing I leveled up is dexterity. I have 33 dexterity, which kind of seems like a lot. And it is a lot. But I decided to do that because I wanted to just increase my ninjutsu power. That way, the duration of my buffs will actually last longer. So the quick change scroll will last for an extremely long time with this build because I have higher dexterity. Same with like tiger running and cat walking and sneak thief. I use all of those if I want to go ahead and try to just speed run like the underworld. I help people a lot and I like will help them through the underworld. So if I want to just go and grab a buff real fast, I can go ahead and use cat walking, sneak thief and tiger running to run through the level really quick, grab the buffs without having to kill all the enemies, and then just get to the boss quicker that way. But I do like to fight the enemies when I am doing the depths of the underworld because to me, that's important. If you're farming the depths, you should be killing like most of the enemies, opening most of the chests, and not trying to just speed run it to get to the bosses. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the clan. Obviously, the clan is the same for both builds, but the clan that I'm in is Toyo. Now I need to say this much. The reason why Honda is so popular is because of the effect damage taken half unscathed. What it means is that when you have full health and you get hit, you take half damage. You have an 80% chance of that happening when you're in Honda. So that's why Honda is so popular. But with the Oyamatsui Grace, it gives you that same effect, but it's 100% chance of it happening. So if you're using the Oyamatsui Grace, you can switch clans. You don't need to be in Honda. So I like Toyo. Toyo is great for both of the effects. The life recovery Amarita absorption is super nice, especially with a build like Oyamatsui, because you want to be able to try to keep your health at full as much as possible. So having a lot of life regen and also having life recovery Amarita absorption, so when I'm attacking, I'm getting my life back, is going to help tremendously for keeping me at full health that way I take half damage 
And then the other effect here is just really good if you're trying to level up. Even when you're max level, you can get focus levels. It's expensive. It's 3 trillion Amarita if you want to get your focus level maxed out. So it's going to take a while. But if you are doing in-game activity like the Depths of the Underworld, you get a lot of XP. And having a 25% chance of doubling that XP is huge. So this is going to really help you out big time if you're trying to level up and max out your focus level. Now there's another clan though I have to give a shout out to because that clan is also really good, especially if you like to play a lot of co-op. And that is this one right here. I'm not going to try to pronounce that because I can't. But what this does is that it gives you minus 16% damage taken while you're playing co-op. That is awesome. The other effect is also really, really good. It gives you a free protection talisman whenever you do a purification. So what that means is that you have to like walk over a yokai realm pool and purify it. Now, you can basically do that with the barrier talisman. That's fine. And you literally get a free protection talisman, which is just crazy. And it will give you 51% of your max health. You will take zero damage. It will nullify that amount of damage. So if you have 10,000 life, that's 5,000 damage. That is absolutely crazy. Now, let's talk about the skills for both of the builds. When I will talk about the skills, though, for the Corrupted Susano build, since that's using versatility, the skills are much more important. There is a lot of information I have to give out about that. But for now, I'm going to talk about the passives I like, and I'm going to talk about the skills that I like on both builds. So the first one here is Full Moon. This is great. Whenever you have full health, you do more damage. Relentless, this is great. Just more key. You always want that. I guess I should bring this up. The Mystic Arts. You have to get actually both of these if you want to get Melee Mastery, which I have at 36, by the way. But you have to get both of these. If you have Mystic Diot, that's actually pretty good if you like to do the Switch Stance stuff. I'm not a fan of it. I don't like doing it. I just, I find it to be a headache, honestly, like always trying to maintain it. So to me, I don't even bother. But if you like to play like that, it's a totally fine, like, play style. And I would say getting Mystic Diot would be good because both of the Mystic Arts with that play style is extremely good. Corner Boar. Now, here's the thing. This is good. I would recommend this. I would not recommend, like, wasting points into Corner Tiger because... Whenever I get low, I'm trying to heal to get back to full. I'm not trying to fight when I'm low health. So instead, I like Corner Boar because whenever I'm low, potentially I can survive. So this is better. I like the defense. But offense, there's no point. I'm going to heal. So I don't see the point of that at all. And finally, Shadow Strike. This is really good. Whenever you're behind the enemy, you do more damage. So that's kind of a no-brainer. Now when it comes to the skills that I like on both builds, Empty Retribution is awesome this is really good at applying like your weapon buff so like the purity buff or if your weapon is awakened you can apply corruption really quickly with this move it's really good for that cyclone cyclone is absolutely awesome especially against humans because if they run out of key when you do cyclone 2 you're going to do that really cool like grapple move and it does crazy good damage and by the way, this move is so easy to learn the timing. There's a lot of moves where it's like, man, the timing is so complicated. With this, it's so easy. You will do it almost every single time once you learn the timing. And then finally, Arc of Chaos. This is a boss skill, so you have to farm the boss for it. But man, is it worth it. This is crazy good. It does a ton of damage. You can throw it from range. I mean... I definitely would recommend taking the time to farm for this because it's totally worth it. Now for the split staff, there are a couple passives that are unique. Well, it's not totally unique because other weapons do get this, but the switch glaive doesn't. And one is three wars. This is going to make it so you get reduced key when you get hit. You don't have to get this, but it is 12%. So I kind of looked at it and said, you know what? Why not? You know? And by the way, with Relentless on this, I only go for the 20 because if you want to get the 10, you have to get all of these perks. And I don't want these perks, so I just go for the 20. And then the other one is 7 stars. This will make it so you do more damage to enemies that are out of key. So this is amazing. Definitely, definitely get this. Now, I do love Mystic Diot on the split staff because both of these 
are very good. So definitely get both of them. I have 35 melee mastery on this. And when it comes to the skills that I like to use, the main skill I use is changing ways. This is such a great skill. It does crazy good damage. It hits the enemies like really easily. It's really, really good. Dragon Dance is one of the most powerful skills in the entire game. It does crazy good damage. The problem with this though is that a lot of times enemies can easily move out the way. So I like to only really use this when either A, the enemy is cornered and I know I can hit the enemy with it, or B, when the enemy is out of key because the enemy ain't moving when it's out of key. So basically that's when I like to use Dragon Dance. And then finally, Unruly Revolution. This is extremely good against humans, human bosses, and any annoying fast moving enemies are just hard to hit yokai enemies like for example dwellers like something like that if you are having trouble hitting it just use unruly revolution you will hit it every single time so that's the skills i like to use for both builds now i'm going to start talking about the susano versatility build because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to like the skills and stuff so first things first, let me just kind of like point this out about Oyamatsui. So with this build, I'm using seven piece Oyamatsui and it is awesome. The main reason why it's good though is because of the Honda clan effect, which is damage taken half unscathed. So whenever you have full health and you get a hit, you take half the damage. And if you have a lot of life regen and you have a lot of Amarita, like life recovery, you're able to just stay full health most of the time, and then when you get hit, you take half the damage. It's so, so good defensively. Having minus like 8% damage taken is not bad either. 30% life, this is how you get basically 10,000 life, and the more life, the better, the more tanky you are. And with this build, we go for the 7 piece, so you get 14% melee damage, which is not bad at all. That's actually really, really nice. Now, when it comes to Susano. One cool thing about Susano I like is that you get minus 6% damage taken. That's not bad. I don't like the increased defense purification. Both of the builds actually have that. Izanagi has the same thing. It's fine. The problem is, is that it has a really short duration on it. So I don't really think that's like good. Key recovery is always like nice. So why not? But now let's talk about versatility and why this is good. Now the way this works is that every time you do an active skill, you're going to get one stack of versatility. If you do a different active skill, you'll get another stack of versatility. So that would be two. You can get a maximum of nine stacks. And the thing is, is that at nine stacks, you get 60% more damage. So that is awesome. Now the way that you want to play it, in my opinion, at least the smartest way to play it, is to try to get high stacks quickly and then you want to milk the high stacks. So this is what you can do. You do a combo that can quickly get you to six or seven stacks. And then what you do is you just sit on the seven stacks, for example. And each stack will have a 30 second like duration. So whenever like the time is running out. So let's say you only have like 20% of that stack left. Do another skill. And then milk the eight stacks, basically. And when that's about to run out, do another skill, get it to nine. When that runs out, you're back to zero. Do your little combo, get it back up to six or seven, and then milk it. So that's what you really want to do. That's the best way, the smartest way to play it. Now, another thing I have to talk about is actually from the Samurai skill tree. This is flash attack. Now, first of all, it is flashy. But if people see you doing this in co-op, you look really cool because you're using like both your weapons like and you're going back and forth between them. I mean, that just looks really stylish. It looks like you really know what you're doing. This is not hard to do. Whenever you do a key pulse, you press the button to switch your weapon. That's it. So it's not hard. And guess what? This counts as one stack of versatility, but it actually counts both ways. So if you go ahead and you do a flash attack from your switch glaive to your split staff, that's one stack of versatility. And then if you do vice versa, so you go from the split staff back to the switch glaive, that's another stack of versatility. Another quick thing you can do, by the way, for versatility is, believe it or not, a burst counter. And you don't even have to successfully do a burst counter. You can just randomly throw out a burst counter. See, I'm using like Baku with this, which is a brute. 
and this is a corruption build, so Baku just makes the most sense. But what's nice is you can just go ahead and press your burst counter button, and you can just hit the enemy with it randomly. That's a stack of versatility. So just like that alone, that's three stacks, really easy, quick stacks you can get. And there are like some crazy combos you can do with this. And I'm going to go ahead and right now show you a quick combo to try to get high stacks as quick as possible. So I like to start with the Switchglaive in mid stance. And the first move is Windswept. Then I like to switch stance to high stance. Then I go into Empty Retribution, Arc of Chaos, and then I do Cyclone. And then from this, I'll go ahead and Flash Attack to the Split Staff, Changing Ways. I did a Burst Counter. Now I go into the big damage move, which is Dragon Dance, and absolutely destroy the boss. I mean, it's crazy. Now, if you were paying attention to my versatility stack counter, I was able to get to nine stacks with that combo in 20 seconds. I was able to kill the boss in 30 seconds. But now I'm going to go over the same combo, but in the skill customization screen. That way you can get a better understanding of it. And also, if you want to look at my custom active skill settings, you can see what I'm using on each of these skills. So if you want to pay attention to that, go right ahead. But I like to start in mid stance with the switch glaive and I do wind swept then I'll do switch stance retribution which takes me to high stance then I'll do empty retribution followed up with arc of chaos then I do cyclone that's five stacks right there I will flash attack to switch to the split staff and then I will do changing ways which guess what that's seven stacks right there and remember I like to get to six or seven stacks and then I'll milk it so I let the duration go down, then I do another skill to get to 8, same thing, I let the duration go down, I do another skill to get to 9. If you're fighting a boss though, it's perfectly fine to go ahead and get to 9 right away if you want to. Now another important thing to have, no matter what weapon you're using, is a bunch of backup moves. These are moves you can do to get more stacks quicker, or if you are running out and your duration of versatility is about to go away, and you can't think of what to do, just go and do a backup move because you probably haven't done it yet. So with the switch glaive, I like to do the whole hold down the heavy button, which I like focus retribution, and I also like fleeting edge. I can also do blinding edge in mid stance if I want to. And if you want to use the switch stance stuff, you can for mid and low stance. So these are good for versatility. So if you want to play that style, it's definitely a pretty good style with versatility. Now when it comes to the split staff and all the backup moves, I do like the whole like, you know, do a button at the end of the combo, either heavy or light attack at the end of the combo. In high stance, I like this seesaw strike. And basically, I do like the other ones that are in mid stance. I do primarily play in mid stance though with the split staff. Where with the switch glaive, I like to stay in high stance because I like cyclone, arc of chaos, empty retribution. But when it comes to the split staff, I stay in mid stance a lot because I'm always doing changing ways a lot. And then whenever the enemy will go out of key or if they're cornered, I will go to high stance to do dragon dance. These are on the same button. So basically you have to like use different stances. And then of course I have unruly revolution. This is a good skill I like to use against humans and annoying to hit enemies. So this is another easy stack. And serpent sweep is pretty good as well to build up a stack. So those are basically the main moves I like to use as backup moves. And like I said, if you were paying attention to that combo, that combo is awesome to build up the stacks extremely quickly. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the weapons. And I already like talked about the fact that I'm using 6-piece Susano and 7-piece Oyamatsui. But the weapons, obviously this is a corruption build, so you want to use weapons that have corruption on them. And I do think that this is one of the best split staffs like in the whole game because it's really simple. It doesn't come with any other garbage. One of the problems with corruption weapons is that a lot of times they come with something that is just stupid. Like an example is the switch glaive. Like this comes with faster movement and marita absorption, which the thing is that's not bad, but there's a lot of corruption weapons that come with some really bad stuff. And the problem is, is that when they come with something like that, 
you're going to have to deal with that and you're going to lose one of your special effects. So you want to be able to put a lot of special effects on your weapon and you want to get like all the bonuses like key damage, maybe like, you know, it costs less key to attack. That's good. And I like to have like corruption accumulation on this. So those are important where if it comes with like some extra special effects, like some garbage, it can be a problem. But the good news, like I said, this one doesn't. It only comes with imbued corruption. So that's awesome. Now, of course, I do recommend having Mystic Diot Split Staff. I really like that a lot. But you'll notice I don't have it on my weapon. And that's because I have it on my scroll. I would have preferred to probably get it on the weapon. But I just couldn't get lucky enough to get a good Split Staff with Mystic Diot on it. So that's kind of the problem. So instead, the star effects I have is Attack Bonus Magic and Life Drain. Those are okay. I'm cool with that. And on my Switch Glaive, I have Attack Bonus Magic and Melee Key Damage. And the thing I do want to bring up about this one is that the faster movement speed and marine absorption, I do actually like that. It's good because it allows me to zip around the map really quickly. Something people always ask me is about why do I use faster movement speed, like let's say on the gloves. So I'm going to show you this right now. Basically, on most of my builds, I like to use faster movement speed Amio Magic Kit with minus melee attack key consumption. This is what I like normally on gloves. And people will point out, like, why do I use that with Kasha Soul Core? Now, in this build, I don't even have the Kasha Soul Core on. But most of my builds, I use it. So people will ask that because they'll say, it doesn't stack, right? And no, it doesn't stack. But the thing is, is that all buffs are not the same. So some buffs will give you, like, a really low percentage, and other buffs will give you a much higher percentage. So an example of that is actually the faster movement speed. So I'm pretty sure the best that you can get is Tiger Running Scroll. And if not that, there's also a set, which is the Master of Spears. And the faster movement speed you can get from that set is like 90%. So you move really fast with that. Where with this, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's probably like 65 or 70%. Where with Kasha, it's only 15%. So it's really bad. And the thing is, is that the higher percentage will always win if you do like stack them together. So this is good because anytime I absorb Amarita, I can run really fast and I like it for just running around the map. Why not? Now let's go in and talk about the ranged weapons real quick. One big thing about ranged weapons, I will say, if you can get ranged weapons with Oyamatsui on it, this is the way to go because basically that's just an easy like Oyamatsui that you can get to drop. And just equipped it. I would just equip it. Same with accessories. I think Oyamasui on your accessories and your ranged weapons are like a must. If you're going to go for Oyamasui, try to get it on the accessories and the ranged weapons. But one thing that you want to get on your ranged weapon is damage bonus agility. That's really good. It's really good, at, especially against like bosses, where damage bonus enemies defeated are better if you're running through like a big map or something. But to be honest with you, I'm too lazy to deal with that. So normally I just always keep my rifle equipped no matter what. Now here's a big change. We're going to talk about the armor. And the thing is, is that I did switch this up. I used to use the governor's armor with my builds. Now I decided to go ahead and switch it up to the veteran's armor. Now to be honest with you, I did give the veteran's armor a good little test. And I did not like it. And the reason why was because I felt like I was dying way more trying to use the veteran's armor than trying to use the governor's armor. I felt more like tanky with the governor's armor. And I still like the governor's armor because it is good. But when I was doing my test, I think my problem was I was trying it with like the Odachi and I think I was even using the axe at one point, which those are slow weapons. So probably it wasn't a very fair test. So when I decided to go ahead and test it out again with this build, and I'm using like faster weapons like the Switchblade and Split Staff, I really started to notice, okay, you know what? This is really good because I'm always attacking and I am taking a lot less damage. So I kind of have to recommend this. Again, if you're going to use a slow swinging weapon, I don't know about Veteran's Armor. I think that it might not be so great. But if you're using anything that's like somewhat faster like the Fist, dual swords are you know the switch glaive the split staff anything like this definitely i think having that minus damage mid attack is extremely good so we're using the hairy caterpillar helmet it's a heavy helmet 
But the reason why you want to use this is that, one, it's heavy. And two, it gives you a better percentage for the damage taken mid-attack. So the helmet for, like, the veterans is, like, maybe 2.9%, where this is 5%. So that's why you use the Harry Caterpillar helmet. And basically, if you want to know about the star effects that I recommend, I always will recommend Anima Charge Melee Attack for the helmet. That's really important. Anima is also good. Now, it doesn't really matter to have, like, a lot of Anima, but it never really hurts to have more. That's the way I look at it. And, of course, I have Melee damage unscathed i have key damage on this and i have attack on this i have attack on every piece the chest piece and the pants it's extremely important if you're using a corruption build to try to get sentience charge now here's the deal corruption builds can be kind of annoying to farm for because you need certain things like sentience charge now on the armor itself you can get the star effect on the chest and the pants but you're talking about 40 percent so definitely try to get it if possible so you want to have sentience charge. On the chest piece, the other one you want to try to get is minus damage taken. The more minus damage taken you can get, the better. You're just going to be tankier. Life recovery and marine absorption definitely temper that on. The minus elemental damage taken is also extremely good. And I also have attack on this. On the gauntlets, I've been having like trouble getting like a really good pair of gauntlets, but I'm actually kind of happy with this one. I have attack, I have melee damage on it. So why not? And the other thing I want to point out is I did go ahead and put a life inheritable on this. That's why there's life on the gauntlets. Now on my pants, again, you want to get sentience charge. And I would say you probably want to try to get minus damage taken. But instead I got life. So I'm happy with that. Because any life increase for Onyamatsui, because remember we get 30% more life. Anytime you can increase your life, it's going to actually add up and be pretty awesome. And again, I have the attack inheritable on this. And as you can see, like on every piece, I try to have either melee damage or melee damage unscathed or active skill damage, something like that. Now, again, the boots, these are not perfect. I think the perfect one would probably be like some type of damage bonus and then dodge range up. But I can't get that. So instead, I have Amio Magic power because why not? Again, you'll notice I have life inheritable on this, and I have an attack inheritable. Now, if you're wondering about that, when it comes to the life, basically, I have a lot of, like, orange life inheritables from chess pieces from way back in the day. So, basically, I just go ahead and max out their familiarity, and then I can throw them on any piece of armor. And if I wanted to get 10,000 attack, or not 10,000 attack, but 10,000 life, on this build, I could. I just need to put on one more life inheritable. And the thing is, is that if I was to do that, though, I would have to get rid of, like, some key damage or something. Which I don't want to do. So that's why I don't care about having 10,000 life with this build. Now, another important thing I need to talk about real quick is for the weapons, I did a double remodel. And for my split staff, I remodeled it for magic and courage. So it scales primarily with those two for my... Switchglaive, I went ahead and remodeled it for Constitution and Magic, so it will scale with those two. And for my armor, I remodeled all my armor for Refine, which increases the stat requirement. So, like for example, the helmet will require 49 stamina and 49 strength. The armor, or at least the veteran's armor, will require 50 Constitution and 50 strength. So, there you go. That's why I have like 50 strength, for example. The constitution doesn't matter. But because I have to raise my stamina for the helmet, basically I'm able to go ahead and reinforce one piece. And what that means is that it will increase the weight of that piece. And it increases it by quite a lot. But that's why I have 54 stamina. Because with this setup, I can go ahead and reinforce one item. I went ahead and reinforced my chest piece to get more defense. But what you could do, which is not a bad idea is to go ahead and reinforce one of your accessories. Because some accessories will actually like scale with things that you might not have any points into. Like an example for me would be skill. If I had a really good accessory with really good star effects on it, but it would scale with skill, I couldn't refine it because then it's going to require like 50 skill and I don't have that. So instead, I could go ahead and reinforce it to increase the defense and then I can go ahead and 
refined everything else because that would be fine. But when it comes to my accessories, again, this is kind of a problem with the corruption builds. You need to get sentience charge on your accessories. And it's a lot. It's 60%. So you want to get it on both accessories. That way you can add up. My build, this build, actually has 320% sentience charge, which is amazing. That is super, super good. My weapon will awaken extremely quickly because of that, and that's important. But trying to get like a god roll for your accessory for a corruption build is impossible because you would need four star effects. So a god roll, I will use this as an example because this is pretty close. It has three really good star effects, but it would need one more to be a god roll. You would need to have sentience charge, sloth amio magic hit, melee damage versus some type of element. Corruption would probably be the best one, but any other element would be fine. And then finally, you would also want to have melee damage versus zero key enemy because that's another 40% damage we're talking about here. I'm missing 40% damage. If I could have that, that would be great, but I don't. And the reason why is because RNG, I just don't see it happening. To get four star effects and to have all four be perfect, you have such a low chance of that happening. Now, maybe it could happen on a Yazakani, because on a Yazakani, it always comes with the minus one set requirement. So on this one, for example, what I could get would be melee damage versus some type of element, sentience charge, and melee damage versus zero key. If I could get that on a Yazakani, then it would be a god roll. But the problem, again, is that it's just so hard to have that happen. But Yazakani's are good because you can put life recovery and Marita absorption on there. Remember, the more life recovery you can have, the better because of Oyamatsui. We want to be full health as much as possible. And this one, I went ahead and settled for this Yazakani because I'll take the 10% act and skill damage. Why not? And it also came with the sentience charge. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to use this Yazakani. So that's basically my armor and my accessories. Now let's talk about the scroll. Now the scroll of the dam I'm using is Ultimate Courage and Sentience Charge. It actually has pretty much 95% Sentience Charge, which is really, really good. I also have Ultimate Magic and Ultimate Constitution on this because that's really great and I love them. And I have Mystic Diot Split Staff on the scroll because I couldn't get it to drop on the weapon. And I also use Path of the Demon. Now, if you are max level and you don't care about leveling up your focus levels, or if you're max level and you also have your focus levels maxed out, you can technically use Path of the Ravenous if you wanted to. It gives you life recovery and Marita absorption. It's really nice, but you get a lot less experience. So if you're trying to level up your focus levels, don't go for that. But regardless, to me, I prefer Path of the Demon. I love the extra duration. I think it's fantastic. So I almost always go for this. But like I said, Path of the Ravenous is not bad either if you want it to go ahead and use that. Now the Guardian Spirit I'm using is Baku. This is obvious. I love it because it's a brute. I mean, that's awesome. But also, this is perfect for a corruption build. You get melee damage versus corrupt enemy, corruption accumulation. The anima charge is extremely good. So Baku is amazing. Now we need to talk about the soul cores. Now let me actually start with Oroki. Because Oroki gives you damage taken mid attack. Minus 21.5%. If you combine this with the veteran's armor. Okay. Which it adds up to a lot. And also I need to bring this up. My secondary guardian spirit is the boar. Now, if this is your secondary, it gives you damage taken mid-attack minus 7.5%. So overall, if you add it all up, it's basically minus 52% damage taken mid-attack. That is absolutely amazing. And that's something that can really make you a lot more tanky as long as you're attacking. The problem, of course, like I said, when it comes to the veteran's armor, is that if you're not attacking and then you get hit by something big, you probably might get one shot. It it does happen. Where with the governor's armor, that normally never happened to me. But see, the thing is, is that I'm always attacking. So normally I do get the benefit of it, and that's that. 
But one thing I was able to do with this Oroki Soul Core and this Kazuki Soul Core was I was able to get Sentience Charge on them. So this is another 60%. So that's huge. If you can get Sentience Charge on all your Soul Cores, it makes a big difference. But again, that's kind of hard with RNG. Now, Kazuki, I like it a lot. I also like Impa, you know. With my other build, the Izanagi build, I'm actually using Impa. But with this build, I'm using Kazuki mainly because of that Sentience Charge. And because of that, I had to get minus one attunement cost on my other two cores. I needed it on Nightmare, I needed it on Oroki, and that's that. But this is a really good core because not only does it have Sentience Charge, it also has Attack on it. And I was able to put the Inheritable on here for Anim Bonus Corrupted Enemy. Now this is what it needs to say whenever you're going for an Anima Bonus. It needs to say increases Anima in proportion to the base damage dealt to an enemy suffering from this status effect. So that's very important. That way, if I corrupt the enemy and I attack the enemy, the whole time the enemy is corrupted, I'm getting more anima. That is huge. Now, the thing about Oroki is that he always will come with anima bonus damage taken. And it's AA. It's not terrible, but it's also not really good. But of course, we're using this mainly because of the damage taken mid-attack. That's really good. 21.5% is crazy. And like I said, this has minus one and sentience charge on it. So this is basically a god roll for me. I basically just went ahead and put the inheritable on there for attack. Nightmare Bringer. This is such a good soul core. It's a good soul core to use if you wanted to try to apply an element to the enemy. Applying confusion is always important. Combining two elements together. Nightmare Bringer can normally apply at least one element on every enemy. Because every enemy is weak to at least one element. And there are some enemies that are weak to basically all elements. Or at least they're not strong against any element. And Nightmare Bringer can just flat out confuse them on his own. So that's something that's really good about him. But melee damage versus corrupted enemy. That's amazing. Anima charge, awakening weapon. That's amazing. And I mean this is a really good core. This one didn't have attack on it. But it had life. So I said you know what. This is fine because I need the minus one attunement cost. And I went ahead and put the Inheritable on here for Anima Bonus, Confused Enemy. It's AA, and this is really good. This is one of the reasons I always get my Anima back so fast. is because I always try to corrupt the enemy. I always try to confuse the enemy by applying another element onto the enemy. But this needs to say the same thing. Increases Anima in proportion to the base damage dealt to an enemy suffering from this status effect. Anytime you see one of these, by the way, always hit the Options button. And always read it to double check it to make sure it's actually good. Now, I'm going to talk about the magic and the ninja. Now, one thing about the ninja you're going to notice is that I'm actually using some more stock. I have my four quick chain scrolls. These are great. The duration is super long. With all of the dexterity and the ninja power I have now with this build, man, the duration of this is great. So if I die, I come back. Really, really good. Now I do use Catwalking and Sneak Thief as well. Because if you are playing through the underworld or the depths of the underworld, if you want to, you can basically become invisible. The enemies can't hear your footsteps. Remember, I have the Switch Glaive, so basically I can go ahead and run faster with that. And I can just like run up, grab the buffs, and run away. I don't have to fight anything. So this is why you would want to use these. And Tiger Running, normally you would want to use too. But because I have the Switch Glaive, I don't need to worry about that. Now when it comes to the magic, I like to use three Lightning Familiars and three Water Familiars. This is really just to help me apply Confusion as fast as possible. Basically, the Familiars are amazing. They're one of the best magics in the whole game. If you are applying Confusion to the enemies and the bosses, you're going to have such an easy time with them compared if, you, if you're not. I don't see enough people using them. I still don't. Like, I do see more people now using them, but I still don't see enough. I think everyone should be using familiars, like a lot of them too. Extraction Talisman is extremely important because when you hit the enemy, you get Amarita, meaning that it, you will get a lot of Amarita life recovery if you have that. On this build, I have like 105 life recovery Amarita absorption, so basically I get 105 life back every time I hit the enemy. And that is like crazy when you're hitting the enemy with something like Changing Ways. I mean, Changing Ways hits them like 
a ridiculous amount of times, like 20, 30 times one combo. It's really, really crazy. Carnage Talisman, this is great. Basically, it gives you a 40% melee damage buff. That's crazy good. And the defense debuff that you get isn't really all that bad. I wouldn't worry about it really at all. And then finally, I'm using Rejuvenation Talisman and Barrier Talisman because I decided to throw this on because it gives me like a nice little bit of health back. And again, remember, we want to try to keep our health at full. So Ultimate Constitution, Rejuvenation Talisman, Life Recovery and Marita Absorption, it really does help a lot when it comes to keeping our health at full. And Barrier Talisman is just amazing for the stamina buff and being able to automatically dispel yokai realms super super good if you want to go ahead and take a look at my item shortcuts you can basically see them on the right side there that's what i like to use and i do actually have a fourth shortcut that i will use but that's mainly just for all my ninja stuff so if i decide i want to actually help somebody and i want to like quickly run through the underworld i'll turn on my fourth item set and that's where I basically keep all of my ninja stuff for that now let me give you some farming tips for this build because I said I was going to do that basically here's what you want to do if you want to basically construct a build like this the easiest way to do it is you want to use lucky drop equipped armor and you also want to use lucky drop equipped weapon and you want to use lucky drop accessory which is not equipped accessory, it's just random. You get more accessories that way. So then what you want to do is you want to forge your desired armor and weapons. So in this case, veteran's armor, you want to have like the full armor on, the hairy caterpillar helmet, the ranged weapons. I wouldn't worry about these so much, but when it comes to the actual weapons, yes, you do want to have your corrupted weapons. So go ahead and forge them. But if you want to use another weapon at first, because maybe it has like, you know, it actually has like a good plus value to it, so you'll do some damage, then you can go ahead and use that. And then whenever you start to get the drops, that that's when you can start switching, basically. So what you would want to do is you want to get a scroll of the dam that actually comes with the lucky drop Susano on it for this build. And this one I have right here, I really like a lot. It's a really easy scroll. You could do this in co-op, in the Tory Gate, Expedition, whatever. Hopefully people can join you to help you. But basically you want to farm something like this to try to get Susano Grace to drop on your actual armor. You don't want to just start equipping random pieces like, oh, this is some random piece I got. No, you want it to drop on your veteran's armor. As you can see, all of these pieces, they're all Susano, okay? So you want to try to get Susano on like as much as possible. Because then if you want to get Oyamasui to drop, you need to go into the depths of the underworld. Now you mainly need to farm 6 through 10 or 11 through 15. That would be your easiest way to farm it. But you want to go ahead and farm it. That way you can... Let me go ahead and put that on. But that way you could try to get some Oyamasui to drop. 1 through 5 it won't drop. But if you are farming, you will get it to eventually drop. Hopefully, you can get it on accessories. You can get it on your ranged weapons. That would be nice. And then basically get it on maybe a couple pieces of armor or weapons. But again, see, here's the thing. If you have farmed, right, and you have, like, almost everything with Susanu on it, for example, then it doesn't matter. Like, if you get, like, a, a chest piece, right, with Oyamasui on it, go ahead and equip the veteran's chest piece with Oyamatsui because you're not going to lose your Susanoo bonus. You know what I'm saying? That's basically like, in my opinion, one of the easiest ways to farm for a brand new build if you're trying to start from like, you know, scratch. And the other thing too, that you might not realize about the depths, but the way that the depths basically works is that whatever you have equipped, like grace-wise, so if you have Oyamatsui equipped on your accessories, and you go into the depths. When you exit the depths, you're going to have a ton of accessories with Oyamatsui on it. I'm talking about a ton. When you look through them, you're going to be like, wow, I got so much Oyamatsui to drop. And it's because mainly it's going to be dropping whatever grace you have equipped on that particular piece. So if it's both accessories, 
you're going to get a ton of accessories. If you have like Susano on your boots, you're going to be getting a lot of boots that will come with Susano. So if you have things like Lucky Drop equipped armor and you're getting veterans boots, it's going to probably come with Susano. And obviously this is a way to farm for star effects. If you want to try to get better star effects, just farm the depths basically over and over and over again. And you can always try to farm the easier floors, which would be 6 through 10 or maybe 11 through 15. So that would be your best way of trying to farm for Onyamasui and also to try to get your Susano. Just you got to get a scroll. Either you can find it from just randomly like searching for scrolls. What I did, by the way, when I first got Scrolls of the Dam, I went ahead and I just would search without conditions. I would just search expeditions for picture scrolls. Actually, I would search Scrolls of the Dam. Let me do that real quick. But I would search these because I would try to find people doing them and I would join them and I would try to get the scroll from them. And the thing is, is I wouldn't know what the scroll would come with. But, you know, if I got lucky, I could get some good scrolls this way. So, you know, that's basically that's basically the way to do it. And you can normally see like if it says Lucky Drop Grace of Susano or something like that. Go and like farm it with the person. Try to get some drops for yourself. But then, you know, hopefully you'll get the scroll to drop so you can just do it by yourself. Or if you know people, you can ask for like, you know, scrolls of the dam. People will generally give them to you if you ask them. So that's another thing you can always do. Alrighty guys, well now I'm going to switch to the other build. And oh man, I know this video is going to be long. But these builds are complicated and I really want to try to break them down for people who might not fully understand like how all this stuff works. Alrighty, well the good news is that this should be shorter and easier than explaining Susano. Susano is always kind of annoying to explain because versatility is kind of complicated for people who don't really understand it. So I always try to explain it in a way that hopefully people will understand how to play it properly. But Izanagi, this is so much more simpler because all you got to do is just buff yourself and you're good to go. And also, farming for this build is easier because you don't have to worry about certain star effects like Sentience Charge. And that just really helps a lot. But let me go ahead and start by talking about the graces. I'm going to repeat myself if you watch the other segment, so keep that in mind. But I'm doing this for people who are skipping around using the timestamps. But we're going to talk about Onyamasui and the reason why this is good. Mainly it's good because of damage taken halved unscathed this is the honda clan effect and basically what you want to do is always be at full health that's the goal to have enough life recovery that you're always at full health that way when you get hit you take half the damage and because you're only taking like a little bit of damage it's easy to get back to full if you have a lot of life recovery so that's the goal having 30 percent more life well that's really good it makes you a lot more tanky having damage taken minus eight percent that's not bad the rest of the stuff, you know, it's kind of whatever. 500 life, sure, that's great. We don't need the 7 piece because we are using instead 7 piece Izanagi. Now, Izanagi is like super awesome. Now, when it comes to the extra stuff, life, you know, that's good. Key recovery speed, that's fine. The increased defense purification, Susano comes with this as well. And in both cases, it's kind of garbage because it's so short. The duration is really, really short. Purification accumulation is really good. And of course, melee damage versus purified enemy is awesome. 30%. So as long as we can purify the enemies very quickly, we will get 30% more damage against them. That's super, super good. Now, the main reason why you want to use Izanagi's Grace, though, is for the seven piece, which is cleansing prayer. What this does is that it's going to give you a buff, a unique buff, and it's going to have three like stacks, basically. And what you have to do is you have to perform a purification on a yokai realm. That's really easy, by the way. And we can kind of cheese it with a certain soul core, which I'm about to talk about. But at one stack, you will automatically regenerate your life. And by the way, all of this can stack with other buffs that are similar. So like the auto regen for your life can be stacked with something like the rejuvenation talisman to give us even more life, okay? And then at two stacks, you get increased key recovery speed, which can be stacked with something like the barrier talisman. And then at three stacks, you get melee damage. 
The melee damage that you get from this is 30%. So overall, you get a 60% damage buff from Izanagi's Grace. And if you want to get Cleansing Prayer, you might think, man, that sounds like it's going to be hard. Purifying three Yokai Realms? Well, it's not. And that's because there's a certain Soul Core. It is the Owl Boss Soul Core. And if you use that Soul Core, you can get the maximum amount of stacks for this instantly. So now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. And I'm going to demonstrate the insane amount of the life recover we get on this. Because that's what it's all about. You want to be able to stay at full health. That way you will constantly get the Oyamasui damage taken half to kick in. And it just makes you almost unkillable. Now what I like to do is I like to actually keep the Owl Boss Soul Core on my secondary Guardian Spirit. That way I don't have to waste a Soul Core on my primary. Because I have Impa on, I have Oroki on, and I also have Kasha on. So these are the three I like to have equipped. And then what I can do, if I ever want to give myself the Izanagi's Grace buff, Cleansing Prayer, I can just simply switch to my secondary spirit, which is the Boar, and then I can actually go ahead and use the Owl Soul Core. It will cost you five anima to do this. Now, if you don't have any anima, you can always go ahead and use a plant fruit to give you five. So if you just eat one of these, which I couldn't in time, but if you can eat one, you can basically get five anima back. So that's something you can always do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and buff up and I am using Rejuvenation Talisman on this build as well. But now I'm going to go ahead and shoot out the Owl Boss Soul Core. Which if you are not locked on, it's going to hit the ground. And if it hits the ground, it's going to make four Yokai pools. And if we just walk over it with the Barrier Talisman, boom. You can see the buff on the screen now. And we're going to get life recovery from that. Melee damage, faster key recovery. And it will be crazy. So what I'm going to do right now... As I'm going to summon a bunch of enemies. I'm going to try to summon all the enemies from the dojo. And then I'm going to show you how insane my life recovery can actually be with this. So go ahead and put that on. And at this point, I'm not even attacking. That's the thing. I'm just letting the familiar give me the life recovery. But look at my life. I'm going to let me get hit a couple times here. Go ahead and hit me, guys. There you go. Look how fast it comes back. So remember, okay, that guy hit really hard there. But remember, like the thing is, is that we are stacking the Cleansing Prayer. We have the Rejuvenation Talisman. We have Ultimate Constitution. So whenever we're at 70% life, that's when that's going to kick in. And I have like 105 life recovery and Marita absorption with this. So anytime I attack the enemy, I get my life back. And if I do attack them with like, I don't know, an actual fast attack, like the split staff or something, it's going to be much better than just the familiar. But just the familiar alone, I mean, my life recovery is insane with this build. Now, we're going to talk about the gear, but I'm going to start with the weapons. I'm using the Phoenix Wing Switch Glaive, but you could also use the Evil Crusher Switch Glaive. Either one is fine because they do the same thing. They give you imbued purity on them. The Zen Split Staff, the same reason, because it comes with imbued purity on it. Now, people always will ask, well, wait a minute. Why are you using the purity weapon buff if you have imbued purity on the weapons themselves? The reason why you do that is because on the weapon itself, that's just a backup. It's a backup for if we do run out of our weapon buff. It does happen sometimes. But the thing is, is that the weapon buff is going to apply purity much faster than this and especially against a lot of bosses the bosses will start to resist purity the more you apply it to them so let's say you apply it twice with just the weapon with that 10 imbued purity they'll probably become almost like immune to it where you just cannot apply it to them properly and if that ever happens you can always use a fleeting guardian amulet if you're using ho as your spirit this will apply purity super fast to the enemy you can see it in the gameplay, actually. I did it to William. William resists his purity big time, but most enemies cannot resist this. Ho is just too good at applying purity. 
You can also, of course, use the Guardian Spirit Talismans if you wanted to do the same thing. The difference, of course, is that these are items where the Guardian Spirit Talisman is magic, so it will refresh every time you go to the shrine. But you do want to basically be using the Purity Weapon Bot. That's our main way of applying Purity. Now, the star effects I have on this is Attack Bonus Constitution. I have Life Drain Active Skill. And I actually went ahead and threw on cyclone key damage because that's pretty good you know you want to be able to knock them out of their key human bosses that way you can actually do the whole grapple thing on the zen split staff i actually have attack bonus courage life drain and melee key damage on it now the reason why i do not have mystic diod on this is because i have it on the scroll just like on the other build i recommend trying to get mystic diod if possible and if you can't get a good weapon with it then go ahead and just put it on your scroll. The ranged weapons is the same thing. You basically want to have damage bonus agility on this, okay? On the other one, you can get damage bonus enemies defeated. That's also good. But mainly, I like to only use damage bonus agility. So I normally never switch my ranged weapon. Also, I would say if you can get Onyamasui to drop on your ranged weapons, I think that's a really good place for it. Same with the accessories. I think Onyamasui... Is extremely good on the accessories now I need to talk about this again just in case people are skipping around and they're using the timestamps but I went ahead and switched my armor to the veterans armor and the hairy caterpillar helmet I did it because of the damage taken mid attack so basically you can stack that up to be really really high on this build I have basically damage taken mid attack minus 52% so as long as I'm attacking, I'm taking a lot less damage. Now, I did do some testing, by the way, and I was thinking, man, I wonder if the familiars count as actually, like, you know, attacking. It doesn't. And I'm not exactly sure what counts and what doesn't count. I feel like some of the soul cores might count. Like, I do feel like maybe, like, a soul core that kind of acts like a melee attack would count. But other soul cores that don't act like that, like Kasha, I don't think Kasha counts because it's not really like a melee attack. But essentially, you have to be melee attacking. And if you're attacking a lot, then you're going to be taking a lot less damage. Originally, when I tested Veteran's Armor, I was testing it with like an Odachi, which is fine, I guess. But the Odachis are slower. And the problem is, is that, you know, you're more likely to get caught while not attacking. So if you do get hit when you're not attacking... With this setup, you're going to take more damage, and you could even be one-shotted. Where with my other setup, that wasn't really happening to me like ever. I wasn't really ever getting one-shotted. But the difference is, is that when I am attacking, I am taking so much less damage because I have so much damage taken mid-attack that, like, it's awesome. It's insane. So I definitely, at this point, I think I recommend Veteran's Armor over the Governor's Armor. Now, the Hairy Caterpillar Helmet, again, this is actually the same as my other build. I have Anima on this, and I have Anima Charge Melee Attack. I think Anima Charge Melee Attack is the most important star effect to try to get on this, if possible. Anima is good because increasing your overall Anima is fine. It's not like something you gotta do, but it does definitely help out. So I would maybe recommend it. On the chest piece, I have Minus Damage Taken. And I have active skill damage. This is not perfect. What would be perfect is life on the chest piece with minus damage taken. Minus damage taken I think is the most important. And then life would be the second. Because remember since we are using Onyamatsui and we have the six piece. We're getting that life bonus. So any type of increase to life is going to basically add up and be huge for us. So that's something I would recommend getting. The active skill damage is not needed. You can totally go ahead and replace that and get that life, and that would be better. You 100% need to put life recovery and Marita absorption on your chest piece. You want to get as much life recovery and Marita absorption as possible. That way you can get your health back up, like I was just showing. The minus elemental damage taken, that's awesome as well. If you have the damage taken for element on the chest piece, and you also have it on your accessories, which I do on this build. You can basically get it to minus 50% because you have your titles. So if you have done like your challenges with your titles, 
you basically get like I think minus 13.5% is what I get for that and then I get the chest piece and I also get the accessories and if you add it all up together basically it's minus 50% so that also helps a lot because some of the things that would normally one shot you in the depths would be things like elemental attacks so having that elemental damage taken minus is very very good on the gloves I do have the melee attack key consumption, which in my opinion, I think is one of the most important things on the gloves. I really like it a lot. I also have active skill damage on this. Now, I showed this before. I'm going to show it again. I do have these gloves. Now, the thing is, I've decided at this point, the only time I will actually go ahead and use these gloves, because I really do like the faster movement speed, Amio Magic. Now, I am using Tiger Running Scrolls with this build. So I can always just use Tiger Running Scrolls if I want to run faster. But this is kind of easier because what I like to do is I throw on a familiar, I run past enemies, and then I run faster. And I just think that's better. And I need to repeat this, but if you're wondering, does the faster movement stack with Kasha? People always point this out. They say, wait, why are you using that if you're using Kasha? Well, the reason why is because not all buffs are the same. And the Kasha buff for faster movement speed is really, really bad. It's only 15%. So if you have a higher buff, like the Tiger Running Scroll, for example, then that's going to take priority. The higher buff will always take priority. And you're going to run at the Tiger Running Scroll speed until the duration of that runs out. Then you'll run at the Kasha speed if you're using Kasha. So basically, that's why I like to have the faster movement speed on the gauntlets, are with this like I said I've been using honestly the tiger running scroll again I have life on this I went ahead and put that on as an inheritable another thing I have on is you can see I have attack on like every piece those are inheritables so you basically take those you max out the familiarity and then you soul match it onto your armor that's how that works on my pants I have life and I have minus damage taken these are perfect absolutely perfect that's what you want on the chest piece as well, basically. And on my boots, I have melee key damage and I have melee damage unscathed. Again, I would say I would probably want to have dodge range up. That would be a good one, but I don't. And I did go ahead and throw on the life on the boots. I have faster wind recovery on here as well. Now, I do have to bring this up. For my weapons, I did a double remodel for constitution and magic on the switch glaive. That way I get better scaling. And I did a double remodel for Magic and Courage. So it's A minus A minus on the split staff. So that's what you want to do when it comes to the weapons. On the armor, you want to go ahead and remodel everything for the refine option. That will increase the maximum stats required. In the case of the Harry Caterpillar helmet, it's 49 stamina, 49 strength. In the case of the veteran's armor, it's 50 constitution and 50 strength. So that's why you see that I have... 50 strength but I went ahead and I got my stamina up to 54 because what you can do is you can actually reinforce one piece of armor now when you reinforce it you get the best defense buff but it makes it heavier but the stats don't go up so what you can do is if you do get like an accessory that's really good like a god rule or something but you do not actually have the stats to refine it so an example would be in my case something with skill there are accessories that require skill and if you go ahead and you refine those accessories it's going to take like 50 skill to actually equip them which i don't have so what i could do is i could go ahead and i could reinforce it to make it heavier and then i could still use it so that's something you can do with this build is that you can go ahead and reinforce one armor piece including accessories which you can remodel as well a lot of people don't realize that but you can remodel these and you can get more defense that way that's how you get the 12,000 defense basically now again the accessories it's so much easier to get like god roll accessories for this build compared to the corruption build because on the corruption build you need sentience charge on this one you basically need to get slopped omnio magic kit melee damage versus some type of element which in my case it's purified enemy which is perfect and you need to get melee damage versus zero key enemy that's it that's a lot more reasonable than trying to also get sentience charge but this is a god roll this is a total god roll for this build 
because that's exactly what we want on it. On the other accessory, you need to always have minus one set requirement, either a star effect or a Yazakani. In my case, I have a Yazakani. And you want to have melee damage versus some type of element. Again, it's perfect because it's purified enemy. And you want to have melee damage versus zero key enemy. So again, this is a god roll. Both of these are god rolls. So it's much, much easier. And by the way, I have a lot of accessories just like this. Now, they don't come with purified enemies. These are the best ones because they come with purified enemies. But I do have a lot of these that will come with like, you know, melee damage versus electrified enemy. And then it will be a god roll because it comes with the things I'm looking for for this purity build, essentially. And like I said before, having the elemental damage taken minus is very good on the accessories. You definitely want to try to be able to withstand those elemental attacks. Life Recovery Amarita Absorption on the Yazakani Magatama. Very, very good. Magatamas can come with that. There are certain things that can come with it, like medicine cases and the Magatamas. There's a couple different accessories that can get Life Recovery Amarita Absorption but it is totally worth it to put it on there. Now the scroll of the dam I'm using, it comes with ultimate magic, ultimate courage, and I went ahead and put on ultimate constitution, so that's basically perfect. I have active skill damage on this, and I have mystic diat split staff, because I need that, and I can't get a god rule split staff to drop. It just will not drop for me. It's really crazy. And then the other thing I have on this is path of the demon. Now, if you want to put Path of the Ravenous on this, you could. That's also very good. In my opinion, Path of the Demon and Path of the Ravenous are the two best. The problem that I have with Path of the Ravenous is that you get a lot less XP if you have that on. Which, in my case, I'm not really too concerned about that because I do have max focus levels. I've been able to do that because I've played so much and I've been in Toyo so long that I get so much XP. But if you're trying to get max focus levels, I really wouldn't use Path of the Ravenous. But here's the thing, for me, I am just such a big fan of Path of the Demon. The duration increase is amazing on everything, but I'm also like really confident that it will also extend the duration of things like Cleansing Prayer, which that's important. That's really, really good. So I really would recommend Path of the Demon. Now, the Guardian Spirit is ho -Oh. This is extremely good because... We get like everything that we're looking for when it comes to like damage versus purified enemies. And also we take less damage versus yokai. That's also really, really nice. The soul cores I have on, I have Impa. Now, I've always talked about this, but Gazuki, I like Gazuki and Impa. Impa, I prefer against yokai bosses. Gazuki, I prefer against the normal enemies. And I prefer Gazuki against the human bosses because it will hit them really easily. It's really easy to miss with Impa. But Impa, you can really spam this. So there are certain bosses, yokai bosses especially, that are extremely dangerous, especially in the higher floors of the depths. And what you want to do is you want to try to keep them stunned. And basically, if they can't move, they can't do their shenanigans that will get you killed. A great example of this would be Giant Toad. Giant Toad is so easy if you can lock up Giant Toad. But if you let Giant Toad like do any of his crazy Nijistu stuff, you're probably going to die. So that's where Impa really does shine is because it's fast. It's super fast. Kazuki's good, but it's slow. And that's the problem. So that's why I'm using Impa. But I'm also using it because if you want to put Kazuki on this, you need minus one attunement. And I don't have it with the rest of these. So that's another problem. But I have attack on this with the inheritable. I have anima bonus purified enemy, which it needs to say increases anima in proportion to the base damage dealt to an enemy suffering from the status effect. So that's very important. You always want to read this to make sure it's the right one. I also have increased defense yokai ability hit, which is good. It gives me a defense buff. Why not, you know? Now, Oroki, this is extremely good because of the damage taken mid-attack. It's minus 21.5%. That is amazing. And also, my secondary spirit, which I showed before, but I'm going to show it again, that is actually the boar, okay? So, on the boar, it gives you minus 7.5% damage taken mid-attack. That's how we get the minus 52%
damage taken mid attack is that we have the veteran's armor we have the hairy caterpillar helmet we got our roki soul core and we have this and if you add it all up it's like 52 percent now another thing i have to quickly talk about is the fact that on my secondary spirit i had that owl soul core it doesn't matter about the rarity it could be literally a white it does not matter you just want to have it on that way you can just switch to this spirit to use the owl to get the cleansing prayer buff from the Izanagi's Grace, and then guess what you do after that? You switch right back to Ho-Oh. That's your main spirit. That's the one you want to be using all the time, and you're just using the secondary spirit with the Owl Soul Core to give you the buff, and that's it. Now, Roki will always come with Anima Bonus damage taken, so you can't put an Anima Bonus on this. Now, this is okay. It's not, like, bad, but it's not, like, good either. So that's what I would say about it. I have life on this. I went ahead and put on attack as an inheritable. And I have Yokai ability damage phantom, which is fine. You know why? Because Kasha does good damage and input can do some decent damage when you're spamming it. So that's what I have on that one. On Kasha, this is kind of a god rule. I have animal on this, which is nice. I have, again, I have animal bonus confused enemy. You always want to try to confuse the enemies, okay? And there's many ways to do that, especially with the purity build. When you attack the enemy, you apply purity. That's one element. If you use a familiar, you can apply that second element. That would confuse them. If not, you can always throw out Kasha to use fire. That's really nice. And you always want to try to have the enemy confused. And if you have this anima bonus, you're going to get your anima back so fast. It's so good because it's AA. But again, it needs to say the same thing. You always want to read this. Make sure it says increases anima in proportion to the base damage dealt to an enemy suffering from this status effect. Which basically what it means is that as long as they're confused or as long as they have purity on them and you attack them, you're getting more anima back. And again, I went ahead and put an inheritable on this for attack. Now, let's go in and talk about the magic for this because it is slightly different. The ninja is also slightly different from the other build because with this, I do have tiger running on. So basically I have Tiger Running, I have Quick Change, and I go ahead and only use one Catwalking. Catwalking actually has a really good duration to it. So normally, like I said, what I like to do is if I'm going to go like through the underworld and help somebody, or even in the depths, you could do this too, which I like to farm the depths, so normally I don't do this. But what you can do is you can go ahead and use Catwalking, Sneak if this makes you invisible to the enemies, Tiger Running so you can run faster, and you run and you go grab the buff. You grab the buff, and then you head to the boss, and you fight the boss. That way, you don't have to waste time fighting all the enemies and stuff. You can just, like, speed run. So that's really the purpose of all these. Quick change is your main one, though. This is for actually fighting in combat. It's important. The duration is extremely good if you have high Nijishu power, and having higher decks means you're going to have higher Nijishu power. Now, on this build, I'm using the same thing. I have the Water Familiar and the Lightning Familiar. This is just to allow me to apply Confusion. I use Purity as one element always, and I can always use one of these as another element. If I need Fire, I can use Kasha, and Kasha can easily apply Fire. Also, Input can apply Fire in the Dark Realm. When you're in the Dark Realm and you do the Input like Hammer Kick Attack, it will actually like leave a Fire Pool on the ground that can light the enemy on fire. So that's a cool thing about Input I like a lot. A lot of people don't realize that either. The Extraction Talisman is extremely important for Life Recovery Amarita Absorption because when this is on, when we hit the enemy, we get Amarita. So that means that every hit, we get our Life Recovery from that. In my case, I get 105 life back, basically, every hit. And if I'm doing a really fast attack, like changing ways with the Split Staff, I'm getting a ton of life back. The Carnage Talisman is awesome and amazing because it basically gives you a 40% damage buff the debuff that you get for defense is not that bad. It's really, really not that bad, especially in the underworld or the depths if you are grabbing the buffs. I have the barrier talisman on. This is important for the key recovery, but also this is extremely important for the dispelling of yokai realms because that's what this build is all about. We are dispelling the yokai realms to get cleansing prayer. So this is also very good. Rejuvenation talisman, again, I decided to use this because I want to stack as much life recovery as possible and this is like super good i mean if you were like paying attention i believe it's like 380 life per second so i mean if you add up all my life recovery it's crazy 
we are talking about 380 from this. It's like 150-ish for Ultimate Constitution, but it's like twice a second at least. It's really quick. It's like pow, pow, you know? And also the Izanagi's Grace buff, the Cleansing Prayer, I think it's like 200 and something. And my Life Recovery Amarita Absorption is like 105 per hit. I mean, if you just add it all up, you're talking about I'm getting thousands of life back in seconds, you know? And in my little demonstration, you could see that as well. And then finally, we have our Purification Talismans on for our Weapon buff. I used three of them. I think this is good. And yeah, this is way, way better than just relying on imbued purity on your weapon. You do not want to rely on that because the bosses will eventually just become flat out immune to it. If you want to take a look at my item shortcuts, you can see that. Again, I do have a fourth shortcut. And on my fourth shortcut, that's where I use all those ninja items. That way, when I'm running and speed running, I can just quickly get access to them with an item shortcut. But if I'm not doing that, I only like to have three item shortcuts because these are, in my opinion, are the most crucial things. Alrighty, so now let me talk about how to farm for this build. It's very similar to the other way that you farm. And essentially what you need to do is you need to go ahead and first you want to forge what you're looking for armor-wise. So if you're trying to copy this build, you want to get veteran's armor, okay? You want to get the hairy caterpillar helmet and you also want to try to maybe get the weapons. The ranged weapons, I wouldn't worry about these, honestly. They can be anything. Now, what you need is you need on your accessories, you need to have Lucky Drop Equipped Armor, Lucky Drop Equipped Weapon, and Lucky Drop Accessory. And that's not Equipped Accessory, by the way. It just basically will allow you to get more accessories, but that's always good. But you want all three Lucky Drops, okay? And yeah, if you can get more luck, that would help. That way you get more drops. But what you're looking for is you're looking for a scroll that's going to have Izanagi's Grace on it. Now, there's one in particular that's super popular. You can almost always find it, and that's this one right here. Basically, if you search for Scrolls of the Dam, you will find people doing this scroll a lot. And you want to basically play it with them to farm it, and then hopefully you can get the scroll, and then you can farm it on your own, or you can host a co-op lobby and have people join you, because people will join you with, for this. Because it's a popular grace. Susano is also a popular grace. So if you can get like a Susano scroll, people will join you for that as well. So anyway, this is what you want to do. You want to basically try to get what you have equipped to drop with Izanagi. So the veteran's armor. Not some random garbage. I see people do that all the time. They start equipping random pieces of Izanagi's grace. Don't. You want to stick with the idea of the build, which is veteran's armor. So just stick with it until you eventually get is a Nike's grace on every piece. If you're doing one of those scrolls with Lucky Drop, it will happen, okay? And then once you're happy with your Is a Nike's grace, that's when you need to go into the depths of the underworld. And what you need to do is you need to go from floor six. You can also do floor 11, either way. Don't do floor one, but floor six to 10 or 11 to 15, you could farm it. Those are like your easiest like floors to farm, basically and try to get Oyamasui to drop. It's RNG, it's random, and hopefully you can get it to drop. Farm it though, kill every enemy, open all the chests, get all the buffs, fight the boss. Don't just try to fight the boss, you know, actually farm it. And if you do, you will get Oyamasui to drop. And like I said, I would definitely try to get it on the ranged weapons, ranged weapons don't matter. I would try to get it on accessories, Honestly, they don't matter. And any piece of armor with Oyamasui, and when I say armor, I mean veteran's armor or hairy caterpillar. You know, with the lucky drop equipped armor, these will drop and maybe it will come with Oyamasui. Same with the weapons. If they drop with Oyamasui, you can equip them. But you want to equip the right weapons. You want the Zen split staff. You want the evil crusher switch glaive or the phoenix wing switch glaive. This is what you're looking for. And here's the other thing. Whenever you equipped something, right, like with the grace of Oyamatsui, for example, if you have both of your accessories with Oyamatsui on it, and then you go into the depths, and you have also lucky drop accessories, so you're going to get, like, more accessories to drop. You're going to notice that when you exit the depths and you look through your accessories, you're going to have a ton of Oyamatsui accessories. Because the way that the depths work is whatever you have equipped, 
or whatever grace is equipped on that slot, you're going to get more of that grace to drop. So an example is on the boots. If you have Izanagi's grace on the boots, you're going to get a lot of boots to drop with Izanagi's grace. Now, if you have Lucky Drop equipped armor, if they drop like Veteran's armor, they should be Izanagi's grace. And that's an easy way to farm for star effects, okay? So that's basically what you want to do. And at first, though, you do need to get lucky with Oyamatsui. You need it to drop. And like I said, I would definitely like really hope to get it on the ranged weapons and the accessories. And maybe, you know, any piece of armor would be fine. You don't have to have it on the helmet or the weapons. But the good thing with this build as well is that because this build only uses six pieces or it only you know, utilizes the six piece bonus. If you have the minus one, then basically you only need five pieces. So if you're able to get it on the two accessories and the two ranged weapons, you only need it on one other piece. So like, you know, any piece of armor, any weapon, and there you go, you're done. You got the full Onyamasu you're looking for. Where with the Susano build, you want the seven piece bonus. So you need more. So again, it's another reason why the purity build is better or easier it's kind of like hard to say you know but i mean that's basically everything i wanted to talk about guys i think i've covered everything i talked about how to farm for these builds i went into great details about both of them i will say that i would recommend getting both maybe and to be honest with you it's easier to get both if you are talking about things like oh yeah because if you notice i have the same helmet on both builds I have the same range weapons on, both builds. And yeah, the accessories are different, you know, and then obviously the weapons are different and stuff. But, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. And the more and more you play, by the way, and I forgot to mention this about farming, but, you know, if you can get the Grace Inheritables to drop, those are super good because you can always save them and use them later, you know, to try to, like, help you out. But, like I said, I would try to get both builds, and the reason why... Is because when you play with people, sometimes you're going to like meet people or play with them and they're going to have a corruption build and you're going to have a purity build. You're going to conflict with each other. So you don't want that. You want to be able to say, oh, okay, that's fine. You can use your corruption build. Just give me a second. I'm going to switch. And then you switch to your corruption build. And if it's the opposite, you're on your corruption build and they're using purity, you can say, oh, you know, one second, I'm going to switch to my purity build. And now you can, you know, actually work together properly. Because the last thing you ever want is to conflict with, like, the opposite. So that is something, that's a tip I would recommend. You know, maybe try to get both builds if possible. But this is, like, the super in-game builds that I recommend. And they are amazing. You are so tanky with both these builds. You're practically unkillable, especially with this Izanagi build. It is insane. And damage-wise, they're fine. They can melt. If you're watching the gameplay, I beat... Floor 30 with both builds in two minutes, basically. It was insane. Alrighty, guys. Well, I would really appreciate it if you could like this video for me. Be sure to subscribe for future videos. And if you do subscribe, make sure to click the bell. That's really important on YouTube now. Thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day. And peace out.